I want to begin by talking about flax seeds. And I read a very interesting article from Sayer G and Green Med Info. Now, I believe in taking flax seed oil. I don't take the flax seed unless you intend to benefit mainly from the chewing of it and the fiber because very little of it actually is uh, absorbed when it's in that small a fashion. It goes right to your intestine, which, again, is good fiber. We want the oil that's in it. That's why we have it. So just an ounce a day can extend your lifespan. Now, think of that. One ounce a day, and you get a longer life from flaxseed oil. Why? What's in it? What's it doing? Well, a new study shows flaxseed positively impacts age-associated changes in inflammation, adding to the already extensive list of benefits that I talk about all this time when you turn off inflammation. A new experiment published in Experimental Gerontology, that's the study of aging, indicates that consuming about an ounce a day of flaxseed, that's 30 grams, 28.35 grams to an ounce. So it's not a, that's not a large amount uh, and easy to get. Let me Imagine uh, a teaspoon maximum or less. So we're not talking about a lot, but it can profoundly benefit elderly subjects, in fact, everyone, and possibly neutralizing age-associated increases in inflammation, inflammation of your brain, your heart, your eyes, and uh, also it's modulating a level of class of fat-derived biomolecules known as oxyliptins. Now, the article is entitled Ele um, Elevated Levels of Pro-Inflammatory Oxyliptins in Older Subjects Are Normalized by Flaxseed Consumption. And very important study. Why? Because these oxys are derived um, and are believed to play a critical role in chronic disease progression as well as the aging process by modulating both inflammatory and anti-inflammatory pathways in the body, making dietary sources and deficiencies of these substances particularly relevant. For example, let's say that you are consuming the oxylipins derived from long-chain fatty acids and uh, and you can downregulate inflammatory processes by preventing the activation of certain immune cells, um, what we call the polymorphonuclear uh, neutrophils. On the other hand, these, uh, these derived from the omega-6 fatty acids, linolenic acid, or its derivative arachidonic acid, have been linked to promotion inflammation. So when you have a steak, make it very simple, when you eat any meat, uh, pork, beef, chicken, you're getting arachidonic acid. That is a bad fat. You don't want that. That is pro-inflammatory. And since the typical Western diet contains a ratio of omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids unprecedented in its overemphasis upon the omega-6 fatty acids, and since flax seeds contain a unique high ratio of omega-3 to omega-6, four times more omega-3, it's just reasonable then that you want the omega-3 because it can rebalance the body's fat biochemistry. So let me make it even simpler. Omega-3 fatty acids are the good fats. Walnuts, avocados, flaxseed, pumpkin seed oil. Um, that's your omega-3 fatty acids. And salmon. The bad fats are the highly processed omega-6 and 9s, your um, let's say sesame oil refined, corn oil, uh, peanut oil. So then you want the olive oil, which is a monounsaturated fat. That's a good fat. But you don't want corn oil. Any kind of light-colored oil, just stay away from it. It's been processed. Even if in its very beginning stages it was okay, the refining, the uh, making it pure and see-through, which I guess... People would be kind of all, all put by seeing some specks and particles in there. Those are actually minerals. Those are the good things. But we clean everything up. In the cleaning up process, we clean up everything that was good. So get your omega-3 fatty acids from flax and live a longer life. Why? Because it's turning off inflammation, and inflammation is what substantially decreases your lifespan, the lifespan of your heart, your brain, in fact, all, almost all of the therapies that are beneficial today are anti-inflammatory therapies. And even at a recent retreat, 
I it was kind of interesting because um, I had an awful lot of people who just couldn't give up meat. They would go out and, and eat at a fast food restaurant and eat pizzas and stuff like that. And yet the people who stuck with the protocol, who went through their caffeine withdrawal, sugar withdrawal, uh, refined carbohydrate withdrawal, and for a day or two uh, may not fill up the snuff because their body's going through withdrawal. Now, there's a lot of compensation. The more vitamin C, the more green juices, the easier that transition is. But then they come up on the other side about three or four days later and go, wow, I really feel good. I woke up this morning and I'm not fatigued. I, I'm bounced out of bed. Yeah, that's the benefit. That's when your body's no, long, no longer in inflammation because inflammation causes swelling. And swelling causes lactic acid buildup. That causes those lactic acid crystals. That causes pain. So the pain in the feet, the legs, the back. Now you're waking up and your body's oxygenated, clean. And you have more energy. So there's a huge difference on how you start your day with either inflammatory agents, bacon and eggs, inflammatory, sugar-coated cereals, inflammatory, milk, inflammatory, coffee, in really inflammatory. And here's the confusion because there are some articles in the scientific literature that show that you do get some antioxidants into the coffee, yes, but you would get far more if you got the organic green coffee bean and process it without brewing it, distilling it, then you get it pure antioxidant. But once you go through the brewing process, you also create a very bad byproduct, which is GERD, where the coffee, caffeine hits your stomach, causes an imbalance of the hydrochloric acid, then you regurgitate that back up, you burp it up into the esophagus, and you end up with a uh, highly sensitized esophagus and hence inflammation. So if people gave up coffee, first you're going to have far less fibrocystic breast disease, ovarian tumors. In fact, one of the ways to get tumors to grow is create a highly anabolic uh, agent like ca caffeine, and that'll do it. Now, another good thing is acupuncture. I mentioned the other day a study showing that even just a little bit of acupuncture is good for you. Well, here's the latest on that. This is a new study, and this study uh, was from the College of Physicians in Philadelphia, and it shows that one acupuncture treatment dropped blood pressure for over a month without medication from Prevent Disease. Quote, emerging evidence from a research study shows acupuncture may be an effective treatment for hypertension. Acupuncture regulates blood pressure, blood flow, and blood temperature. Patients with hypertension treated with acupuncture experienced drops in their blood pressure that lasted up to a month and a half. And that's according to Dr. Susan Semuli, uh, Center Chief Investigator. So if you have high blood pressure and you take one single acupuncture treatment, you can end up lowering your blood pressure for the next month and a half. How about that? 